Welcome to Pi Takeaway. With all that's going on in the EU, we take a look at plantations, namely Saim Dhabi plant and TH plantations. But we need to talk about Fed Chairman Jerome J. Powell and the sharply dovish stance that his Fed took when it not only decided to hold rates steady, but, and unlike in December where he seemed to indicate two rate hikes this year, there would actually be no more rate hikes at all for 2019. So, good news, bad news. The Dow Jones and S&P seem to react positively, but it dipped when you realise that in the broader context, this move came along with reduced expectations of GDP growth and, implicitly, the Fed's very real concern about the global economic outlook. Speaking of one of those concerns, Brexit has been delayed somewhat after PM Theresa May went to Brussels in a kind of Hail Mary to avoid a disastrous no-deal pullout. Now, if May's deal is passed in UK Parliament, Britain will leave the EU on May 22nd. But if it doesn't, UK has until April 12th to settle on a new deal. There is one other thing though, a petition calling for May to cancel Brexit altogether by revoking Article 50, basically it never happened, was put up and the site actually crashed, but now has more than 2 million signatures. So, it will be debated in Parliament. Put some mouse ears on it, the Disney Fox merger is done and dusted and it only costs them like 71.3 billion US dollars. So, Disney now owns the 104-year-old 20th Century Fox Studio, FX, Nat Geo, a bigger stake in streaming site Hulu, but maybe thankfully not Fox News. Bad side of it though, job cuts. Lots of them. 4,000 by some estimates in order to meet that promise of 2 billion US dollars in cost savings. Back at home, it is apparently up to PM Tun Dr. Mahathir now about whether ailing flag bearer Malaysia Airlines gets saved or goes. He admits it hurts to even think about selling it, but he frankly said that the government can't afford it and there have been offers. But there is this group of former Malaysia Airlines employees, including former CEO Tan Sri Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahman, who have banded together to form Golden Skies Ventures and are offering to help bring the airline back to profitability. This week, we take a gander at the plantation sector following the news that Malaysia may boycott certain European products in a tit-for-tat move as the EU continues its crusade against palm oil. The EU Parliament has said that it would boycott consumption of palm oil produced through unsustainable means by 2030 in a move that seems to be tree-huggy but some say has an agenda. So in the dock this week is Saim Dhabi Plantation where it is preparing to exit its ops in Liberia as it looks downstream for growth. But is that enough to overcome all the negative noise? On the other side is TH Plantations, which has had it rough to say the least, both at company and stakeholder level. But there has been changes in management, so time to get in at the ground floor. So let's square them off. Saim Dhabi Plantation is the plantation arm of the massive Saim Dhabi Group and is the world's largest palm oil plantation company by planted area, producing 4% of the world's CPO output, spread over 630,000 hectares all over the world. Its downstream biz involves the manufacturing and distribution of oils and fats products and man at the helm, Tan Sri Muhammad Bakke Saleh. Sign Plant's FY18 earnings were not great with net profit for the whole year dropping more than 80% to 244 million from just under 1.5 billion ringgit the year before. Revenue dropped too from 7.6 billion to 6.5 billion ringgit. So the main culprit of all of this was the plunge in CPO prices seen towards the end of the year which dropped around 26%. Aside from Malaysia, Aminvest Research points out that its Papua New Guinea biz did the worst because on top of the bad CPO prices, there were infrastructure costs because of floods. If you look at Simplan's share price over the past six months, it's about 20 or so odd cents off where it was then, but it peaked in February but has been unable to hold on since then. Recently, Simplan said it had received takeover interest from a few parties for its loss-making ops in Liberia in West Africa. Deputy MD Mohamed Helmi Othman Basha, he has said that they had actually signed a few non-disclosure agreements with a few parties, but there are still quite a few hoops to jump through before it's a done deal. Saying that though, the Liberia ops annual loss is between 40 to 50 million ringgit. Simplan also says that it wants to focus on downstream ops and boost its refining capacity. So that it can cut its exposure to the more volatile palm oil prices. Although management is expecting CPO to be around 2,250 to 2,450 ringgit from April onwards, thanks to more demand from China and India. Looking at data from Bloomberg, the bulk of the calls is predominantly hold or sell. Seven calls for hold, nine calls for sell, with only three buys. Average target price stands at around 4 ringgit 93 cent. As the name suggests, TH Plantations is the vehicle for Lembaga Tabong Haji to carry out its plantation investment activities. It has plantations and mills in Johor, Pahang, Negeri Sembilan and Trunganu, as well as in Sabah and Sarawak. Aside from CPO, it also ventured into rubber plantations. Bad numbers. 
And actually, that is the least of their worries in some respect, but it is bad. It ended FY18 594.6 million ringgit in the hole, as top line dropped from 688 million to 519 million. However, it should be stressed that this almost half a billion loss was because of kitchen sinking, as TH Plantations cleans house. But Am Invest Research says it's worried about uncertainties over the group's direction and points out that the planter's planned sale of its 14,900 hectares of palm oil plantation in Sarawak could mean lower revenue. Also, HLIB Research downgraded its overall outlook on plantations, calling the outlook for 2019 subdued, with production expected to slow. Look, cleaning house is not a bad thing, and it does seem that TH Plantations is intent on getting back on the straight and narrow. Some analysts point out that the worst of it Seems to be over, but it will be a rougher ride. No mincing words about that. But their new CEO, Musmi Muhammad, was formerly deputy CEO of Malaysian Kuwaiti Investment, and he took over from Datuk Sri Zainal Awar, who resigned after being put on garden leave. Three research houses currently cover this stock, and only two of them rated. Maybank is the more optimistic one, with a whole call and target price of 54 cent, while M Invest has a sell with a TP of 45 cent. Looking at the stock for a year because it isn't going to get any easier any sooner and it has been on a downward trajectory, almost halving over the past 12 months, trading at an average of around 64 cents.